Hero Clicks. All the Hero Clicks fans stuck through all the other stuff that we wanted to talk about and we're excited about. So you uh, you ate dinner and now it's time for dessert. So uh, first things first, let's talk about Kevin. Uh, so I, I think this has been you know, uh, Certainly, something that's kept us awake at night and, and working you know, around the clock for fixes, solutions, problem solving on our side. So, uh, it, raise your hand if you don't play Hero Clicks. Okay, so you'll, you'll need context here. So, I'll give you kind of the shorter context of, of where we ended up and where we're going, and then it'll be hopefully edifying for folks too. Uh, in HeroClix, we have randomized product. Yeah, it can go from common all the way up to chase, and then occasionally ultra chase or other fun rarities or hidden bits and, and bobbles in, in those booster packs as well. Uh, in Marvel Studios, HeroClix next phase, uh, we thought it would be really fun to include Kevin. We talked with the licensing to make sure that we could get uh, inclusion of that character. Uh, Kevin is essentially a parody of the Kevin Feige uh, uh, studio boss that. Uh, it gets parodied in the Shield TV show as a, a sentient-ish robot that kind of uh, can uh, mess with continuity. Uh, so, um, I will say for clarity on this, uh, we pulled reference art for it, we sculpted it, we produced it, we spent money on the tooling, we have insertion records of it going into booster packs, we have factory confirmation that it went into booster packs and retail chase boosters. Then distribution after that uh, got incredibly tangled. None of the original Kevins that we were hoping for that would get found were found in the way that you get that ultra chase excitement, whether it would be through, uh, you know, I think a couple of different people found the Masters of Time, Superman today playing Battle Royales. Yeah. So when we do this and we put it together, it's our hope that someone has that yeehaw experience at the table, and then people come over and look to see, like, hey, what did you get? And they're like, oh, you got the, the Superman, or in this case, the Kevin, and have that uh, lightning bolt uh, excitement moment on it. So on our side, we've been doing due diligence with the factories, figuring out the different ways that we can make it right. Uh, in terms of, one, from a product standpoint, so what happened, and you know, this is just you know, between you, me, and the camera as we talk here. <laughs> uh, as people were not acquiring the cabins, purchasing of Next Space started to slow down uh, visibly, which you know, I'm sure you guys probably stopped buying less of these booster packs when you realized you couldn't get Kevin. And then that discovery of the cabins that are in this, what we assume is a like golden pallet or pallets that didn't get shuffled into the, the general larger sum of boosters that we have is getting less and less likely to be found every day. So on our side, we've been working to start shuffling up the inventory that we have, which is incredibly difficult because we have three North America, we have three US distributors. We have other Canadian partners that we work with to get product out. Still with me Canadians? <laughs> we have international partners that we work with to get the product out. And then the product doesn't all arrive, essentially, um, and this is kind of an inside baseball behind the scene things. 100% of the boosters don't land in, in one fell swoop in one location. Essentially, the boosters, imagine them streaming out from factory and through different shipping, uh, optimized for container loads, optimized for shipping schedules, optimized for a distributor saying, hey, could you give me some of it today and some of it to me in three weeks when I have a little bit more warehouse space? So uh, we've been working to essentially try to get that architecture right to essentially, hopefully, make sure that you know, some retailer doesn't open up you know, four Kevin bricks in a row or that there's 400 of them you know, hiding out uh, with a distributor. Uh, hiding out is the wrong word. There's you know, uh, chunks of them sitting in a distributor waiting to distribute in a country that hasn't put in a purchase order yet. So the ways that we're trying to make it right, and uh, I'll run through these from memory. If I miss them, you let yeah, me Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So we do Kevin product, but well, we do product replacements. I'm sure a lot of the different Hero Clicks players that have participated in a product replacement, you get something that's ding, dent, broken, missing cards, and we'll work with customer service, which hopefully is improving. We have a new customer service, good, yeah. new customer service manager uh, who's been working out fantastically, and we're trying to 
uh, react with more speed and efficiency there. Uh, in a world where there is not nearly as many Kevins as we thought we would need, in the product replacement pool, we had Kevins that we were able to start to pull from. Additionally, in China, uh, they have samples and different overage, um, not a crazy amount. I think it was you know, in the dozens, if that. Yeah, but, yeah it was some. some so essentially, we said, whatever you have, send it, yeah. and we'll start to aggregate this together. And then the plan was when we actually get Kevin product in hand, let's start to distribute it out to people in as many different fashions as we can to break the fever there for that product. So the first example of that is going to happen tomorrow. Um, who signed up for the Kevin sign up? Ooh, okay. Well, we'll see. <laughs> uh, you'll see Ryan for, for sure, who will be handing out the Kevins as we go. We have the sign up sheet there. Uh, we brought as many Kevins physically as we could to this show. Essentially, we loaded up uh, you know, what we could. We should have a second wave coming over here shortly. So we went back to production when we were hitting this issue a couple months ago and said, how fast can we do this at breakneck speed if we get these printed and start air shipping them out? Uh, so by Worlds and Memphis, we'll have another wave uh, coming through that we can use. And then show to show after that, that is one path for how we're gonna to start to get Kevin's back out to people. We're working with distribution and retailers because we wanna make it right for them as well. You know, they're, they're, if you have next phase product that is sitting that is not selling because people are waiting for Kevin or trepidatious about wanting to open that booster pack, we wanna make sure that we can help that retailer out. So we're working with distribution partners to figure out who has ordered the quantity where the expectation could be that they had Kevin's in their allotment and then figuring out how we can normalize that. All while we're doing this, at some point the, the dam might burst and 200 Kevin's might show up. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit like, uh, I think they say catching a falling knife on mm -hmm. this one. So. The thing I will say though, is we're gonna get Kevin's out to people and it's not gonna be an issue. So yeah, we're, we feel terrible about this. Yeah. This is not what we want. Like we want the yeehaw moment for Masters of Time where people are taking their Superman and saying, this is great, like this made my whole day. And then sharing that experience on social media, uh, making YouTube videos about it. Who would do that? <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it has not been a lot of fun, and I'm sure for the fan, collector, retailer, distributor, international partner, event organizer, it has been not fun as well. Um, in terms of messaging, I think we could have handled it a lot better on our side. Um, I don't think it is a, a valuable excuse, but you know, we've had a lot of good, positive turnover of people coming in the building, and then some transitions that we're working through too. So. You know, two years ago when we did fan appreciation, and I swear we'll get into spoilers here in a minute. <laughs> uh, you've been very patient. But I think it's important here, you know, that, that we can talk about uh, this because I think it's been top of mind for a lot of folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where was my train of thought? No, I, I mean, I wanted to talk about it. At least make sure we hit the bullets on um, yeah. our, our next steps for some of these future. We had yeah. already planned ultra chases for a couple upcoming sets, and we reacted yes. immediately, of course, when um, everything happened with Kevin. So, yeah. so we, we literally have sent our production manager out to monitor the process yeah. going forward. So it's going to be something where we have representation uh, at the production level to make sure that the more than anything, the mixing is happening that we need it to. We've added more short-term stage gates in our process as well to make sure there's less slippage there. And I think as a macro discussion point, I think maybe related to the next slide on yep. there too. Like can flip over. We're hoping to get the same outsized benefits in quality assurance and production timing. Um, we've gone through a recent change in CRM software, which is about as fun as that sounds, um, <laughs> and accounting software. And WizKids is owned uh, by a large group of companies, and you know, people I'm sure have seen like the benefits of those cross relationships where we're able to offer fairly inexpensive rooms in Memphis for Graceland because of that relationship between the two companies. We're able to do cool things where you can come into the Blue 7-Eleven and uh, get a kid robot plush uh, for RPG. Um, 
one of the things that we're doing on our side is making sure that if you're a retailer or somebody that's ordering from us, you're not doing four different uh, things each time you're trying to order from us. So there'll be a singular tool that we have that, you know, that retailer or distributor can order across all of those different lines of products that, that we make. And then, you know, also not make it a nightmare for our backend accounting and finance teams to untangle all of that at the end of the year. Uh, but that has led to us having kind of this weird negative zone of when does product release, particularly in this last three to four weeks as we've been in the meat of that process. So I bring you good news. They, uh, we, we are shipping product, we are able to take orders on it now. It has been resolved, Masters of Time has a release date, and then within the next week or so, we'll have a large updated uh, release date list for all of the products coming up where you know, there's been specific direct requests about some different Iconics products we have coming up, um, some different things related to Deadpool Weapon X. Actually, quick break. Uh, hands, if you've seen the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. No spoilers. Yeah, pretty good. I'm going on Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have time. We have to watch the first two again. Well, that's a lot of people. So uh, what characters from that movie should we make? Hey, stop right there. There are spoilers coming up. If you have not seen the new Deadpool Wolverine movie, go ahead and skip to 1244 in this video to avoid those. Otherwise, you're going to get some spoilers. This is a fair warning. Spoilers! An entire MCU set? Infinity War. Infinity War. I'll do it all. I like nice pool. Nice pool. Nice pool. Yeah. Nice pool. And nice pool. I want Welsh pool. The, uh, the, like, the armor. Yeah. That's one too. The Welsh. Welsh pool, yeah. Welsh pool. Who's this? Lady Deadpool. Can you still watch Deadpool and Wolverine with Wizkid's people now? Spoilers. <laughs> uh, well, you know, this is all spoilers. Didn't we say spoilers at the beginning of the uh, yeah. presentation? Yeah. Uh, this is well, let, let, let me say a, a couple <laughs> quick more things that won't get into spoilers. Yeah, please, please. And then uh, we brought a lot of stuff to give away to people, too. So, um, make sure don't leave without getting something. Yes, please. Uh, Why anything else? So in terms of the release timing and quality assurance, I want to let people know that we're taking distribution, we're taking timing, scheduling, release process seriously, working farther ahead, further ahead. We're working ahead to essentially make sure that you know, we don't get into similar binds going forward. So, thank you. Can I add actually one point on that? We're, we're also um, gonna do our best to announce and plan uh, details related to events and major tournaments earlier, so everyone plan. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Including like announcing like promos you'd be able to find at those events and things like that. So we're we're already very far ahead planning for next year, um, and, and hope to be able to communicate that stuff much earlier. World's uh, schedule and pricing will be announced uh, on a web page like, within the next week or so. Ryan, that's nice. Oh, <laughs> 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 you want to hit me real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Is this spoiler reprisal? <laughs> All right. Go. Okay. This is good. Day. So yeah, this is your so, slide. Right? Uh, OP ramp up. Uh, we are looking at a wide range of, of more conventions and retail uh, placements uh, as we go forward. Uh, quick show of hands: Has anybody played Supercharge Sealed at a retailer? That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We're fans of it. Huge fan of it. Okay. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. yes. All right. I was disappointed there wasn't that huge. Yes. Yeah. I think the so to be perfectly clear about it. We have to, to get in the event system where people can book events in May. We basically are making our decision on what events will run in January and then figuring out the product assortment for that as well. And then when we do that, um, I think Supercharged Sealed, our first event was at Defcon. Right. So yeah. I think like, had we had like three weeks, it would be here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, next year, let's do it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, more coverage, so Dial H, um, you know, other partners around that, that have helped us out. Uh, Ryan going to shows, we got him a better phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now all of you guys will look HD when uh, yeah, you're, you're winning or losing your Oakwood games. Uh, spotlight events. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, who prefers modern? Is their favorite format? Okay. Uh, who prefers sealed? How about battle rails? Okay. Um, how about, how about miss something, Aaron? What's that? Do that pulp. 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 We got two pulps. That's the game. Okay. Okay. He's got in there. Silver Age. Silver Age. Okay. And then, uh, how? <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. He's not getting there. Golden silver? Age. You're on your own. I know, right? Golden Age? I like silver. No. I'm just curious. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> play all those caps in the drawer. That's exactly what I want. How about Storyline OP? Who loves Storyline OP? Okay. We got a big, cool, colossal thing we're working on for next year. So watch it, Jake. Watch out. Yeah, I, that's true. You haven't had to pull me back. I'm yet. starting to have to pull you back. Yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 it will be it will be big. Don't pull me back, John. Yeah, uh, it'll be colossal. <laughs> but yeah, we we are just excited, excited about doing a retailer program again where. You can go to a, uh, your local game store and get really cool minis, including colossal minis. Just give it all. <laughs> Jumbo shrimp. There you go. All right, who wants to know about upcoming booster releases? The next slide has got one unannounced booster set. And it feels like we just announced Spider-Verse, so. And I think a name for another one. So but we'll hang on this one. If you want so uh, Masters of Time, uh, imminently releasing in the near future. That's a, a time travel fun. Um, the Masters of Time uh, is a really exciting set for us and that for DC telling different story uh, lines across. I think we're at 28 booster releases now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with with mass 27 or 28 booster releases for Masters of Time, yeah. and figuring out unique ways to uh, present characters, present product. You know, they have a 75 or 80 year history now. So to yeah. be able to dig into that trove of characters is really fun. And initially, we were thinking about how do you reflect that wide range of characters, and you know. For people that have played the game for a while, uh, DC 75th attempted to scratch a similar itch. Uh, but this time around, what if dinosaurs? Uh, <laughs> what, what was the exciting idea? And uh, it's interesting, how many people here still collect comics? Or collect comics? Well, that's a good amount. How many people uh, predominantly play Hero Clicks at a comic store? Oh, that's great. That's really good news. I'm gonna to talk to Diamond about this. <laughs> should do more fun, cool events at comic stores. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I initially, when we were thinking about all the different interesting things that we could do for DC sets for any set, uh, on this one, uh, we hadn't done a colossal DC booster set in some time, so it was an interesting opportunity for us to, to look and see who was unclicked, who hasn't been done in a while, what are surprising things that we could do. Uh, and that coincided with Jurassic League being a, a huge success at the comic book store level. So much so that when we went to the store to buy the books to get reference art, you know, we, we do a lot of digital reference art, but when you can get the book, it's more fun to, to dig through and figure out which pages, which panel should we look at. Uh, it was impossible to find in Seattle. Every comic store I went to, you could not find Jurassic League books. So, and uh, try to help out brick and mortar where we can. Mm -hmm. But after that, we were, um, I thought, uh, if you can't buy it because it's too popular, maybe we should make a booster set that features Jurassic League characters. And I think um, just in terms of table presence, they're pretty spectacular. And I think it'd be hard to argue otherwise. Who got a chance to play Masters of Time this weekend or so, this week so far? Awesome. What do we think? Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. 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 Love it. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, running down the line following that, uh, we have the previously announced uh, Black Panther. Um, the previous Black Panther set uh, 
I, I think it was really good and really interesting. Uh, I think it had you know, three different ideas going on in, in that set, just from a title standpoint alone, um, and more as you drill into it. Uh, I thought it was kind of a shame for as popular, as huge, as, as beloved as Black Panther not to have a dedicated Black Panther set. And uh, as we were working on it, hey, thanks. Um, uh, it was really interesting as well that uh, you know we had just wrapped up what you know we would consider our Ghost Rider set, Wheels of Vengeance, and that thought of taking specific characters that were beloved uh, from uh, Marvel or DC universes, and then to do two things: one, deliver against the expectation of like, oh, that is a really cool T'Challa, like that is something that it is like worthy of being a, a badass uh, T'Challa. Uh, is that going to get you spiked on, on YouTube? We're far enough in. Yes. <laughs> a, uh, a awesome Black Panther mini on that, but then, you know, is uh, players that were playing Wheels of Vengeance know that it also lets you put Orb and Zarathos and a lot of things in that if you're a fan of Ghost Rider or if you're a fan of Black Panther, there are a few games that are going to offer you those characters or a few products that are going to offer you those characters. So it's one really cool thing that you know, uh, I love about working on Heroclix is that, you know, uh, I can make the licensing manager of Marvel laugh when I'm, he's like, oh, you're doing Hellcow again? And I'm like, yeah, and we'll do him a third time. Yeah, the high hoof. The balance between how much unclicks to put in a set and then how much uh, of the A tier stake level characters is something that we think about every time that we make sets. And I think sets like Wheels of Vengeance or Black Panther allow us the best of both worlds, where we can go in and say, uh, you know, Black Panther has had team ups with a lot of A-list characters, and then he's got characters that have appeared, you know, 50 times that we've never done a mini for. So it'll be super cool. Thank you. And then Collector's Trove. Um, this didn't start as a collector set. Uh, this started as a, uh, it'll make more sense as we start looking at minis. What are all the cool things that we could put into a booster to surprise people? And what are all the cool elements around Heroclix and incorporated with Heroclix that we could include in there as well? You know, whether it is, uh, I'm sure if you've seen the solicit, uh, relationships to the Infinity Gauntlet, relationships to the Dark Hole. Uh, we got some cool things to show you here in a second. Um, but for us, Collector's Trove is a way that we could say, you know, what are the coolest objects and equipment in the Marvel Universe? And essentially, deliver those to people and then build the set around that. So once you put in those highly desirable objects, equipment, things from the Marvel Universe, uh, who has them all? Who wants to steal them? Who wants to battle for them? And the relationships between those characters built that set out pretty quickly after that. Uh, Spider-Verse, uh, that was another one that was surprising to me too as we've been working on it, that there hasn't been a set called Spider-Verse, a dedicated Spider-Verse set. And I think one of the cool things about working on Deadpool Weapon X was, you know, and for anyone that saw Deadpool and Wolverine, sorry Ryan, uh, <laughs> the, the alternate universe versions of different characters allow us to do really cool things in Hero Clicks as well. And it's funny now, just completing uh, the uh, Deadpool Weapon X set and then seeing the movie, we're like, oh, if only Marvel would have been able to tell us we could have got, you know, six more characters in. So, yeah. So at some point we'll do a fourth Deadpool set and be able to fill that out. But then, <laughs> but I think one of the cool things too is from promos or iconics, we have other uh, mechanics to get cool characters out to people too. So we won't make you wait a long time if we think it's a cool thing that people are going to want. We have a few more like fun Deadpool things on yeah. the way shortly. Yeah. Uh, so. We're so far in the future that we don't have a license or approved name on the next two sets, but I thought as fan appreciation, I won't see you guys for a year. Um, so uh, we decided to share them. So uh, with the rules changes that occurred last year, the influence of terrain and terrain on the game and how people interact with it, and uh, I thought I died for a moment. <laughs> 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 I'm descending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> Smash and Destroy, uh, was that Caution Comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the song. Sm Smash and Destroy, uh, because of, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, for that set, um, it, what can I tell you? We'll look at three minis later, but with the rules changes that happened in Spider-Man Beyond Amazing and the impacts of terrain on the set, we thought, how cool would it be to have a set where, you know, as we call it internally, you know, beat up the city. Beat up the city, yeah. yeah. So essentially, make a mess. Throwing hunks of rubble at each other, smashing each other with stop signs. Uh, you yeah. know, if you like knockbacks, it's probably going to be a good set for you. Um, but like the amount of big bruising characters that exist in the Marvel universe and uh, ways that we can do them that'll be fun, surprising. Uh, new takes on them and some pretty crazy sculpts, which we'll see yeah. shortly. And then uh, the Hero Clicks community picked the Lantern set. That was one where uh, we hired an intern. Uh, was there a fist bump over there? Yeah. Yeah. The intern fist bump? No. I put, I put your Danny's pretty flash. good, but uh, we're, we're on our second intern right now. We had so many good applicants the first time around yeah. that we're making our way through different Hero Clicks interns and then continuing to work with them on cool projects that we have. One of the things that he did that I'm sure a lot of you participated in was market research, telling us what do you like to do, what do you buy, what shouldn't we do anymore, what's exciting. And uh, the takeaway was like, do a lantern set. Everyone said do a lantern set, lantern set. So like, why would we fight that? It sounds pretty good to me. So, and the other piece of feedback related to it, you got that, my, this uh, presentation has one animation in it. <laughs> And a, yeah, yeah, there's Mogo in it. So for oh, the cool. people that were saying in the uh, surveys, Mogo, Mogo, Mogo. We heard uh, you. There's some other lantern characters in there. Yeah. But uh, Mogo, if you're not a Green Lantern person, is a living planet. So so it's like the first hero flick that's also a car? Uh, can't tell you yet. Um, but we're, we're, we'll figure out how to fit it in a booster. I'll say that. DS9. <laughs> 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 Let's uh, hold the big spoiler time then, right? Spoiler time? Spoiler time? Did anybody get a chance? They don't need them? They don't need them? No, we've already spoiled quite a bit. We should hand stuff out to people. We could hand stuff out to, to pass around? Yeah. Yeah, I got some stuff here. I do. That was fun last year. We thought it was fun last year to pass around Wheels of Vengeance stuff. So I don't, I don't have... Uh, so these two that we're about to show, people might have seen uh, some additional figures got added to the booth today. Yeah, so um, I would say maybe check the booth every day to see what's in the case. Yeah. But um, they had two sculpts from Black Panther in there, uh, which were Black Panther and Queen Storm. Yeah. Um, which, if you didn't get a chance to see, they have the really cool sculpt where they can uh, actually like sitting on the field next to each other, like reach out and hold hands. Um, and they absolutely have uh, all kinds of gameplay together. So let's take a look at. Uh, there are a lot Black of cool Panther. Black Panthers in the Black Panther set, which I'm not surprised, but we were like, oh, if you're going to do that, you have to do at least one of like the Wedding of the Century uh, sculpts together. So, uh, hold on, John, they need to take pictures. No, get them all right. <laughs> Everyone's got their picture of the stuff? Okay, yeah. good. So, uh, Black Panther and Storm, uh, both pr pretty uh, fearsome pieces on their own, but even better together. I think the acoustic guitar might make your audio interesting dialogue. Copyright music, please. Bring it on. Keep it going. And uh, one other cool thing about Black Panther, we actually don't have a. Um, Let's pass around the beholder while we wait. Well, we can. You, you guys want to look at the the D and D beholder? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Why don't you go pass that around? It may be the best thing that we made. I better get everything that we pass around back. <laughs> I'm gonna write down. Or, or no more beholders. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say is, uh, for Black Panther, we actually have a. Did anybody get to see the Poseidon today in the uh, Masters of Time? Has a really cool new uh, base on him. It's got that marbling to it. Um, he's kind of our spoiler for deity bases, which is something that's a, a really exciting aspect of Black Panther. Uh, there are these gray little bases that you can attach to pretty much any modern Oreo Heroclix to give them that uh, literal lift on the battlefield, and if you want to go ahead and uh, you can pass one of those around. I, I might have a couple of those that people can have. So the, the idea with the deity base, um, that is cosmetic, 
but will come with, with the higher end DDs that are in the Black Panther set. And one of the. They like it. <laughs> they love it. Let me finish. <laughs> the, uh, the Black Panther set, one of the ideas that we experimented around with and thought about is there's a relationship between gods and mortals in Black Panther, uh, whether it's Bast or you know, the, the other gods in Wakanda and deity characters in Wakanda. And then you know, there are other notable characters like Thor and Loki and others that uh, you could imagine would be interesting there. And the thought for me particularly and, and the sculpting team as we were looking at this was, how do you convey that power on, uh, on a map? And when you look at it, like when you put Spider-Man next to, uh, let's say Poseidon in the, this scenario, uh, how do you make it look like it, it's a big, impressive, imposing character and that you know, co uh, uh, column pillar to it is something that gives it that elevation, not literal elevation in hero clicks terms, but that, that cool deity factor. Yeah, and then um, as, as far as pass rounds go, uh, we do have a cool uh, pass round for you guys. One of the chases from Black Panther. Um, this is Hidari Yao. Uh, basically, you know, Goddess Storm, and we'll have uh, we'll have Ryan pass that. No, just uh, no. There's no the deity base can't go on that because I pulled the dial off. Oh right. <laughs> but you can pass it around and just kind of give people an idea. Of, you know, when we have these deities uh, in this set at the chase rarity we really want to make sure too that they look and, and feel imposing like these god characters um and so you know with the scenario character on top of um the column it's going to just be this really crazy cool imposing piece on the battlefield so we're, we're excited about it and it's got some real weight to it you'll see as you pass yeah. it around too it's a, it's a really neat figure hero clicks characters by weight that's that yeah. a, a chunky one yeah the, uh, the acoustic music is going to make your editing job really fun. It's going to be real fun, yeah. Although, like, if you're listening to this and you don't hear the acoustic music, then just none of this will make sense. You'll have to edit this out. <laughs> but, uh, John Mellencamp clicks? What are we <laughs> <laughs> That's Cougar to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next is, uh, is not Black Panther. We're ready to go to Collector's Show. Yeah. You want to see the Collector's Show stuff that's never been seen before? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, in Collector's Trove, uh, as I said earlier, we're experimenting around with what is the coolest objects and equipment in the Marvel Universe, and it, it, Mjolnir is hard to top. As we were digging through it, uh, Thor being able to throw, summon uh, his hammer and, and use that in terms of wielding, in terms of power, is something that is always pretty cool. Uh, new to Collector's Trove, which I'm sure, you know, if you've seen the initial information about the solicit, are one-shots. Uh, one-shots are essential ways that we're trying to have simplified abilities that can relate to different characters where, you know, anytime that we get new game designers in that are working on Hero Clicks, you know, there, there's generally the, the joke that they want to sing all of their songs, um, which is not related to the acoustic <laughs> guitar guy in the other room. Uh, Having different one-shot abilities that expand what your characters can do or provide a different relationship between objects, equipment, other characters on the map, or have an uh, in-game uh, cool storytelling moment that you, know, you can deploy is something that we're excited to see you know, how fans respond to it um, and you know, how that affects metagames, how that affects building out teams. Uh, and in this picture, you, know, you can see the relationship we don't have the, uh, the Thor card to spoil for you yet. I think it's in a, uh, a brick going out to, uh, to somebody to, to spoil shortly, but uh, you can see you know, the relationship between one shot sculpted character and uh, the equipment. And then I, as far as things to pass around, people reaching into my little goodie bag. Um, this is down there. Well, I know that we talked about, um, you know, objects and, and you know that we're going to be touching on Darkhold characters, of course, um, in Collector's Trove. So uh, we have one of the Darkhold chases here also for you guys to see. And Agatha to pass around there, if you don't mind, Ryan. I'm going to dial and start with this one. That's three things. That's three things. Where, where's the beholder <laughs> right now? Where's he out, out there? Column. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listed with the picture with us in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, how about the uh, Spider-Verse teasers? So here we're 
early enough that this is sculpt only? Yeah, yeah. We're basically, um, sculpt is, is all we have that we can share. But we have um, all kinds of different, of, of course, many, many versions of Spider-Man and Spider characters. Um, but also, you know, we wanted to start to explore some more villains or um, new versions of villains that we maybe didn't get to in uh, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. So you can see um, we've got Spot here. Um, and who knows where his hand's going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've what got... If, what, uh, if, uh, what if we told you... That it's in the set. Are you pull me back? No, no, go for it. <laughs> that one's that. That's exciting. It's in the set somewhere. Spot, Spot's arm is in the set. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you can also see maybe there that um, one of the Spider-Man has a different color base. Uh, like we said, we've kind of been more excited about changing and experimenting with, you know, different types of bases. I mean, Wheels of Vengeance, we had the, the Hero Blow base, the Deity base, of course, with MP55, or sorry, with the Black Panther. <laughs> um, and then here we have, of course, um, the gold bases here with um, our Infinity Gauntlet Spider-Man. So that may just be a little hint um, as to who you can see with the gold base. Uh, before we hop... Favorite Spider-Verse characters, just out of curiosity? Spider-Punk. All right, and we just told you about a set for the first time. We going uh, even further? Smash and Destroy? Yeah, we'll give them three sculpts from Smash and Destroy that have never been seen. Uh, Who's a uh, character that would beat up the city? Oh. 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 There's a lot of making muscles in this set. <laughs> the city doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> Literally smashing a wall. Yeah. Yeah, the juggernaut, uh, when we talk to sculpting, we're like, uh, so we literally kind of make it like Kool-Aid Man, where he just is like going right through the wall. And they're like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, and then we did. <laughs> All right, and then Lantern Legacy is early enough that we don't have things that we could definitely tell you, other than uh, who here liked War of Light? You're going to like this set. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it's one where now uh, it, it's seasoned over time and people love War of Light, and you know, that's something where this is, I would say it's a spiritual successor to it in that there's going to be characters that you haven't seen before, um, but there are also going to be tributes to key storylines that uh, are, are important to Lantern fans. Are there maybe any Lantern core that we are missing currently here? Yes. Yeah. So yes. you want to see Lantern yeah, core? No, I wonder if maybe we would find uh, some of those in this set. There is some of the might They might just be found in Lantern Legacy. So. Then, uh, Almost done. We have a few more sneak peeks. So the starter sets for 2025, and I know a lot of you are seasoned HeroClix players. The things I want to say about this, it's the same rule set as 2024. It's the same rule set as Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. It's our hope to sustain that rule set to make improvements here or there as needed, but no major changes. Uh, we're essentially uh, forcing R&D to put their pencils down on, uh, <laughs> on tweaking the sets, and I think too, um, you know, my hope is the people that have been out and playing are enjoying the new formats, the 2x2 two two math, getting into the action quicker, um, and I think that's something that we're hearing good feedback on, and it's something that we're excited about. Um, the starter sets last year were a huge success for us. We, yeah. we sold out of 100% of them initially, went back, reprinted, uh, and are selling out their the last vestiges. I'm gonna compete with this guy. <laughs> I guess uh, we gotta, we gotta, yeah, just beat him out. Scott Stack is here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, uh, yeah, uh, we've well, been excited about these. They, they've been, you know, really successful, even at like shows like this to get new people into the game. Um, kind of, if you've been over to the play area, you kind of see that we've got all the starter characters out, and people who just walk up and instantly connect with a lot of these characters. Um, if we uh, if we didn't do a Marvel or a DC starter, and just decided to create a, I'll say non DS9 starter because we know you like <laughs> DS9. Uh, what other starters do you want to see? Invincible. <laughs> <laughs> Will the 
25 starter sets have paper map? The correct size <laughs> map? Yeah, paper map. Yep. Yep, there will be, uh, and, and that is something too from community feedback that you know, we, we immediately put into the updated product. Yep. I think the initial thought at the time, and I won't go too deeply into it because it will be a memory soon, was yep. that it was an easier way to graduate in a new player, but I don't think it, it really required and getting them to be able to go to a store with a map and be able to play immediately is something that's exciting. Yep, so it's a, it's a full size map and uh, it is. It's Louder? Louder! DD set. DD? Okay, what do we put in the DD starter? Cleric? <laughs> yeah, like fighter, rogue, and I'm saying anything is on me. I think the starter set is good. We'll love it. Yeah, I think, you know what I'm saying? I think as long as it's actually really good, we'll love it. Anime is a, a big thing that people want. If you really want to get new players into the game, put like uh, the, the, what the anime All Stars game that was out that just had a plethora of different anime characters. Put, the, put something like that in there. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. was a big thing at one point. One piece into the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, anime yeah. is an untapped well of my franchise. I mean, on that note, my hero is a layup. Yeah. Yeah. My hero, yeah. You making all your notes, Ryan? Okay, good. Excellent. Make some, Make some noise. Noise. <laughs> I don't think you can get them to go any louder. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, like fun, different IP explorations, yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. We have a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've got two. Captain America, first appearance. First appearance, Punisher. Uh -huh. First appearance, Captain America, first appearance, Punisher. The first appearance is a, they've been a lot of fun for us to work on. We're really excited for you guys to uh, to get to see some of those. Bring yeah. back Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Star Wars. We even talked Lord of the Rings recently. If we do Lord of the Rings, what do you want to see? Yes. 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 There's a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah. Make a note. Is there a chance of helping to get Dragon Ball Z? You can always ask. Plus, it must be universal. Oh, hey. Yeah. You're typing. He's oh, typing, he's typing. I don't like what's taking notes. Sorry? Bring back forward clicks. Or yeah. Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. Who's <laughs> Campbell? <laughs> Cool. No, those sound good. How about another Valentine's Day icon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the really cool things about Iconics and booster sets and Hero Clicks in general is that almost uh, without exception, 95% of it goes through a hobby game retail store. So I think from our standpoint, when we look at the distribution of it, super awesome. Iconics for us really fulfills an interesting thing where if you have a comic book shop that used to carry hero clicks and wants to get back in, it gives them the ability to dip their toe in, try it out, see if people uh, you know, want to have that. And then also for you know, gifting, it's a thing that we thought is really interesting where uh, if grandma wants to buy her you know, grandson, granddaughter, someone to get into hero clicks, it's hard to be like, okay, here's a brick, like, or you know, yeah. a booster is satisfying too, but a, kind of a, a weird entry level point to, to get in. So with the starter and iconics, our hope was to essentially make sure that we had those cool ways to get into the, into the game. Famous uh, comic covers is a great thing for iconics. So like Fatal yeah. Track, if you watch the SB97, yeah. sure. Fatal Attractions is huge. Spider-Man, like, all the comic covers. Like, you do that, Wolverine, Chris Pierce, Wolverine, three, two more stuff like that. Hang I on. Think, uh, <laughs> I think by the end of the weekend, you'll probably... I think by the end of the next slide, we have a little teaser. Oh, some, yeah, some first yeah. appearance teasers. Yeah. Ooh! So, to, to be clear, these are from three separate iconics. But, 
little things, uh, you can sort of speculate what Iconics they would build out. We asked them if that was a rocket launcher also. They told us battery ram. That was a battery ram. <laughs> yes. Cool. And then I think... Pretty, pretty close. Time. Yeah, pretty close. So who came by the booth and saw the Bifrox bridge? Yeah. So uh, now as we're getting kind of back into the swing of things for conventions and for events and providing retailers more promos and exclusives, uh, more convention support, we're going to ramp up more and more promos and exclusives for people uh, to try to have those in and have affordable entry points for, for folks as well. Uh, Bifrost Bridge, what date do we have on that now? Well, you'll find out next week when we do our, our larger update on uh, timelines post-CRM transition. But uh, with that as well, we got the cards. Whoa. John's got some cool show and tell for you. I do. So they are all, of course, as you can see, uh, sharing the Rainbow Bifrost Bridge, which is also true of their character cards. So you will get the, uh, the full kind of rainbow experience there. All four of these guys come in the same set together, so you're not chasing them across a couple different items. Um, and we're gonna have these in the booth uh, for some pictures, maybe, uh, for you guys tomorrow. Pick up uh, Deadpool and Friends High Five. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I think uh, along that zone, I think that those are the spots where things that are thematically linkable in a fun, interesting way, uh, but then also hit key characters that we don't get to do all the time in booster sets. Exciting. So get a ball here. All right, and then uh, that is the end of our official Thank you. slideshow. Thank you so much.